Hi everyone, hope you are doing well from whatever you are watching this channel, depending on your time zone. Now today is the D-Day of Jubilee Party, Uru Kenyatta Shatoa Kisu, <laughs> and uh, some individuals will feel it. Because now the NDC is ready, the preparation is finished, and it is going to take place as scheduled day. And in aspect all this is happening, Yesterday, Sabina Chege was seen like pleading to William Samway Ruto. And uh, this is a self declared party leader of Jubilee. She was actually saying that Jubilee is finished. And now she's pleading with Ruto that when they knock his door, Ruto should, uh, welcome, should Ruto should uh, welcome them. What one will ask himself is that this one is a party leader. How can a party leader claim the party that is leading is finished and she's still a party leader? Anyway, let me just put what uh, she said first. Eh? President Ruto, you have been our friend. That you believe party that you left, even if it's almost finished, we have held it together. We have become orphans. We are asking that when, when we come knocking at your door, please welcome us. That is the statement. The jubilee you left is almost finished. This is a party leader. So, is she confirming that she is not uh, the real party leader of jubilee party or what she, is she saying? Any party leader will never say his or her party that she or he is leading is finished. This is a confirmation of fear of what they know it's going to happen today. <laughs> and uh, with this kind of statement, people will start asking themselves questions. Eh? Who is the rightful owner of the Jubilee Party? Is it Sabina Chege and the rebels? Or is it William uh, Uhuru Kenyatta and uh, the Jeremiah Kioni team? Then you will see people trying to compare this case because now it's a case in public opinion. Eh? Someone was now starting comparing this case with the issues like um, that Solomonic story, whereby we had a king and now two ladies complaining about a baby. One is saying that because now no one wants to accept, cut the baby into two so that everyone will have a part. That means if you are cutting the baby into two, Unaua. Sasa atakuwa ni maiti kila mtu anaenda azike sehemu yake. But the king was wise enough. He was able to listen to this case and realize that lady who is insisting to cut the baby into the two. And the one who is saying, okay, if it's the issue of cutting the baby into two, give her the whole baby life. It shows the honor. So this is a confirmation. Sabina Chege is that lady who was demanding a baby that is not rightfully for her. She had killed her baby. Sabina Chege killed her baby because she's no longer loyal to the baby party. She killed her. No one can trust her. And because she killed her baby, she's demanding the live baby to be split into two so that they can have part of that baby go and bury. That is the real scenario here. She wants Jubilee dead, go and bury Jubilee. Then she will move on to the other side of UDA. That's a minute check. But who is saying, listen, Jubilee has to survive. And that's why you can see also the good judge, not judge, yes, the good judge, when they make a ruling on this case, they say they will not interfere in internal dispute matter of the belief part. That should have been dealt with the internal mechanism. That's what's going to happen in the MDC. So the judge, in, 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 in his own wisdom, made the ruling which favored Uru Migai Kenyatta. So this story can be compared in that manner. And you can see the really individuals who want to believe dead and those who want to believe to continue going forward. So, 
Sabina Jagi statement tells you that finally they know they have no space, they are going to be crushed. They will, make, they will have nowhere to hide. So when the NDC will sit and make a decision, their chance is not guaranteed. I know they will rush to court, some of them, because now when Jubilee will make a decision, they will kick them out. After they have been kicked out, Jubilee will start demanding that nomination uh, position. So they will want to kick her out from that seat and put in another individual who is going to be loyal to the party and the party leader. So Sabina Chage is showing fear ahead of the NDC. Because she's going to have another battle in the court. Now as a Kamai case at Adelea, Haita uh, 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 through to the end, still she's going to spend money in the court. She's going to be working with the papers in her pocket for the entire time if really she's going to be in National Assembly for the next five years. So possibility of being kicked from that position is there. See, it is 100% sure that it is a good thing. And it is a petition mambo. Next thing will be to kick her from what I the speaker. Na mambo it is a hivu. So this one is going to battle a case in the court. It is a good thing that it is a good thing that it is a Bila karatasi hakuna mali atakuwa. It's the same thing with the uh, Isaac Maura. At one point, ili bakia kitu kidogo tu hivi, Maura kuwe replaced. Ili bakia very small thing. He rushed to the court and uh, of course uh, he was served with some papers which was um, to 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 defend him on his side so that he will not be kicked out and the court order served him. So he had to battle the case when he has the court order which was barring uh, Jubilee Party from kicking him out of the the, 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 the the Senate. That's how he survived. So today we are going to watch closely what is going to happen in Jubilee NDC, how far Ruto Gashiagwa is going to organize goons to try and stop the event because we know <laughs> they will not just sit pretty and wait to see they will try to use every means possible to disrupt the activity in jubilee and if really luto is a really democratic or democrat in this country he must keep off jubilee activities if really he said he want opposition that is vibrant opposition that's going to put him uh, uh, responsible to his work Opposition that is going to, uh, the opposition that is going to put him into accountability, that is accountable to everything, then he must keep off to believe issues. But we know that Shagwa will never keep off to believe issues because he's forcing himself to be the Kikuyu kingpin. It will never happen if there is Jubilee party where Uhuru Kenyatta is still there, the only individual who was coronated as the kingpin of Kikuyu nation. Remember, when Kibaki was in power, he handed over that uh, kingpinship to Uhuru Kenyatta. Uhuru Kenyatta has been with the power, blessed by the Gema leaders, and now he has never handed over. The person who needed that power is fighting Uhuru Kenyatta. Because the best thing that Shabba could have done was to sit down and show respect towards Uhuru Kenyatta. Try to reach out to Uhuru Kenyatta. Even if Uhuru will not respond to him, but show respect. Then from there, public would see he's a respectful person. But he has shown Kikuyus that he's not one of them by disturbing the Kenyatta family. Today he has become a biggest liar and people are seeing that this government is a failure. Jubilee will become a tool that will be used to give a U-turn in ideas, ideology and a plan a sense of direction among the Kikuyu masses in the 2027 general election which will define the new future political position of Mount Kenya region because they have seen this government lied too much 
and they have failed in terms of delivery. Because of that, Jubilee is a threat in the near future. I don't know your views, but let us meet in the comment section for continuation of this conversation. Thank you and see you in our next video. But again, please remember to subscribe.